Right, I'm going to read you a headline now, OK? And this is in relation to Care for Calais, which is a charity that has caused a lot of controversy because they do a huge amount of work on the other side of the channel in those camps there, in the Calais jungle, and then a lot of work with people when they arrive here. Um, they have boasted, you could say, recently about none of the people that they were helping to support ended up on the Bibby Stockholm bars. They do a lot of work at the migrant hotels. Uh, they, their own website appears to indicate that they help people with legal claims, etc., etc., etc. I'm going to read you the headline, Dennis. Watchdog blasts controversial refugee charity Care for Calais for, quote, serious misconduct involving disgraced founder who, quote, had a affair with Tunisian migrant, pepper sprayed an asylum seeker and threatened to drag a female volunteer by the bleeping hair. Not a great day for Care for Calais. It doesn't, I mean, not a lot of Care for Calais there, I would say. Well, obviously, care for a Tunisian asylum seeker. I, I'm not sure if we Reportedly. should uh, have accused every political animal and people who run a charity like that are very political of disgrace just mm. because they have sex. I mean, we're moving into funny territory. Well, I think the there. disgraced element but, was more around the, the idea money, that, that, that £340,000 know. was paid into a personal bank account, yeah. they say, in an attempt to save money on foreign exchange Well, fees. I looked into this because before coming here, you asked me about it, and I did check it out. Now, I have worked in France, no secret, I've lived in France, I've worked in Switzerland, and the rip-off charges of English banks when you transfer money, I mean, forget them not you know, closing yeah. down poor old Nigel Farage's account, they take so much money out of anybody who has to operate in two countries. This lady, who certainly seems a very driven, if you like, slightly eccentric person, but she did a lot of good, uh, said, let, we can save 3,000 quid, stop the banksters getting that money that can do good if it goes into an account that I might have in France. Mm. Now, they have said there's not the slightest shred of evidence of any misappropriation. No. It wasn't done properly. So the blob, I mean, the blob controls the Charity Commission, like all these public bodies. The blob doesn't like anybody doing anything outside their rules. This woman did. He's resigned it's, it's also It's also more about... I get all of that. But it's also more about the way it was run. So, apparently, it was in breach of the complaints policy. The charity failed to identify or manage the conflict of interest and or loyalty which arose, uh, not just, of course, uh, between the director, Claire Mosley, but, but also her sister, who was in a prominent position. Her sister, apparently, apparently was in charge of investigating her as well over... Uh, various different uh, allegations. Apparently, they didn't keep proper records, etc. Do you know what? This is a, a bad look for a charity that increasingly people people fear is blurring the lines between illegal crossings and then massive amounts of taxpayers' money being wasted on the asylum crisis and actual charity work. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think that's a fair point. That I mean, an iron rule I would say is. Don't make these things into family businesses. That always inevitably goes wrong. I remember 10 years ago, I think my daughter, very excited, she's half French, so she wanted to go to Calais with all of her friends from her u university or maybe even her mm. sixth form. Just in those days, it wasn't a sin to be in Calais and, and to come to Britain uh, to help with charity handouts. But it's, it's clearly got wrong. It's good rap over the knuckles. Okay. It's a reminder. Our real problem is... How do we stop so many people heading for Britain? Well, and there, some there, people might say that might say that Care for Calais has got quite a big hand in well, the amount of people coming no, to Britain. I mean, that's what needs to be stopped. The answer is fire these useless Suella Bravermans and Pretty Patel. Right. Get into Why do so many other European countries are able to send people home straight away? No messing around. Who? Sweden, for example. They are obeying EU rules. It's a very good country in terms of receiving, much more generous. We don't have all the hate in the Swedish press we get in our press. I, I, I am uh, going to politely push back a little bit on, well, on, on how, how well Sweden is doing with the migrant crisis when you have a look well, at no, Norway. No. Oh, nobody, nobody in Europe, nobody in Europe, I, I travel mm. in Europe a lot, is do, doing well with the migrant crisis. It's a global crisis, it's a European-wide crisis. But we do see... But the problem, the problem with the migrant crisis in Sweden business. has not been as a result of the Swedes. Has it? It's never the result. It is. Uh, right. the, you've got Kurdish gangs, you've got violent people right. coming in. There's no question about mm. that. But just processing them. I yeah. mean, if, if, if Suella Braverman and Priti Patel had been in charge of recruiting the British Army in 1940, uh, we'd still be waiting now uh, to get enough men to cross the Channel. 
I mean, they are useless. Get rid of them. Come okay. on, stop defending them. Uh, All right, fair enough. Dennis, thank you very, very much. I was wondering, I've got to be honest, I was wondering with my heart in my mouth for a second where were you, go you were going with that 1940s analogy, but I think you navigated that relatively well. It's Dennis McShane there, of course. Uh, it is important to note that Care for Calais, uh, of course, do say that basically they started out as a very small charity, then the problem got very big and they started growing hugely and they weren't really initially equipped for that. And all of the problems have been absolutely unequivocally sorted out now. Good.